Hello and good afternoon, University of Maryland, University College students, for the CMIT 453, which is Troubleshooting IP Networks with Cisco Networking, or the T-Shoot course. My name is Travis Bonfili. I'm going to be your instructor throughout this term, and this video tutorial is going to be a, a quick tutorial on making sure that you properly log out of the Cisco Learning Lab software. Uh, because as stated, uh, what will happen if you don't, the countdown timer, which we'll see here shortly, will continue to uh, eat away at your time until it reaches zero, uh, at which point you've got a couple of options. You can contact Cisco in the hopes that they're going to uh, credit you back a fraction or all of your time. Uh, I've had a couple of students where uh, a fraction of the time has been returned back to them. Uh, and or you would have to purchase another block of time from the Cisco Learning Store. So once you've purchased uh, your software, or I should say the, the, um, the licensing to get you in, and you've registered everything, you would receive an email that would give you uh, your username and password that you've created, and you would come to this site right up here, uh, and you can see it up here in the URL space, uh, so we'd be looking at https cll authcisco.com forward slash web auth forward slash login. And so you would enter in your username followed by your password. Uh, if you needed to reset your password, you could do that here. If you needed to do a system test, you could do that right there. So let's clear this off. Let's get logged in so we can see Let's change the color to red here. So now you'll notice I come in and you've got a whole host uh, of things here. You should only be seeing if you're only doing uh, one Cisco Learning Labs uh, course where that requires you to have the Cisco Learning Labs. You can see here you get a 50 hour block of time uh, and you've got access to that 50 hour block of time for six months or 180 days. Uh, it'll show you when you activated your license and it should say CCNP T-Shoot and specifically version 2.0. Then we're going to go ahead and click on select and that's going to get us into the course. You can see down here I've got some inactive packages. I teach the CCNP curriculum quite frequently uh, and here's the switch course I had that it expired uh, back in June of last year as well as the route course had expired. Uh, and again, all 50 hour blocks access for six months. So I'll clear my screen there. Uh, so literally what you would do is you would click on select. So you'll click on select and what's going to happen is this is going to take you uh, to the the main activity page. And so you can see we've got a list of activities to choose from here. Uh, and we actually sort of follow these in the uh, numerical order in which they occur. So you can see we start with Discovery 1 and Discovery 2, and then everything else is a challenge activity. Uh, they are grouped together uh, with these company names, right? Like Sechnik Networking Limited, which is the company that you, the fictitious company that you quote unquote work for. Uh, when you go to solve problems for Tink Garbage Disposal or Pile Forensic Accounting Limited, uh, Polona or the Bank of Polona Limited, and Radulco, right? So in order to start a lab, uh, and if you've already started the lab, you can see here some of these labs I've already started. It'll say Continue Lab. And the status will show suspended once you back out of the lab. Now, very important uh, are the time summary categories, or I should say the time summary uh, values that you see here to the far right. So total credits, uh, the credits are minutes. So you've got 3,000 minutes, and that is going to be your 50 hours, right? So that's the 50-hour block of time. This shows you how many minutes have been used and how many minutes remain. So if you're on this screen, you're okay, right? Your time is not counting down. So the, the logout warning uh, is posted for this scenario here. So let's say I decided I want to take a look at discovery activity one. 
So I'll click on Continue Lab. Now, at this screen here, uh, you can see it says Time Already Running, but there is no indicator of time. It just simply tells you that it's running. This is not a screen that you want to leave yourself on. Right, so I'm going to click on Resume Lab, and this is going to bring me back into the lab. And I'll actually give you sort of a quick overview here of some of the different things you can choose from. Now, uh, under Help and Settings, when you go to select one of the devices, so when I go to click on PC1, you can see it opens it up here in a web format. Now, if for whatever reason, when you log in, and this is the default setting that I use, uh, but for whatever reason, when you log in, uh, you can see this option right here, switch to local Telnet client. It's possible that when you log in, it's going to say switch to web Telnet client. Uh, because again, that's the default that I have set up for myself. So it all depends on do you want to spawn a local Telnet client, which means you would have software installed on your Mac or your PC that's going to allow you to have a terminal emulator open up. And that could be uh, PuTTY on your Windows platform. It could be TerraTerm on your Windows platform. It could be SecureCRT. Um, I use SecureCRT for my Mac. But the easiest way to do things is to switch to the web Telnet client, which is what I'm using here, because when you click the device, it actually just opens it up right here in the web interface. And I'll show you how to manipulate uh, that preference. We've got frequently asked questions, right? This is going to open up another window so that you can look through here. You know, how do I use a terminal installer? Uh, and here you go right here. I forgot to exit my lab, number 10, and I lost time on my account. How do I get my lost time back? Well, you can contact uh, support at cisco.com, or you can get the support email for CLL External. Right? I would use both of those if, for whatever reason, you lose time. And again, I've had two students. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I've had any student that's been uh, denied some sort of um, recon, uh, uh, not reconciliation is not the word I'm looking for, um, I can't think of the word I'm looking for right now. But to have that time credited back to their account. I've never had a student denied uh, time being credited back. And so on the issue of time, it is right here. So typically what happens is students will come in, they'll be working on something in the web telnet or launching a local telnet client with this screen up. And then the phone rings or they start reading something from... Uh, one of the slide presentations, whatever the case may be. But notice, this is counting down right here, right? And it is not going to stop until I exit from this window. And so to do that, I would just simply come over here and click Exit. Now, when we exit out, it brings you back to this screen. And so on this screen, we are safe right? You're safe. So a minute ago, I, I recommended the web telnet option. Well, if you come in here, you can see tools, you can change your password. And then you've got preferences. And this is where you would set it up. And as you can see, there aren't really many preferences to choose from. So I set mine to web telnet, because again, this is by far the easiest way to access things. But if you're more comfortable with whatever your uh, local Telnet client is, you can certainly do that. And so now we're back to, uh, you can see here the preferences have been updated, but we're at the home page. Now th again, this is a safe page to be on. Uh, if you leave yourself here, the timer is not counting down. Uh, so again, you don't have to exit all the way out. You can come to the home page here and you're safe. Where you don't want to leave yourself, again, is in an activity, and as soon as you say continue, you can see here, time already running, and you're resuming the lab, and so you're working with whatever Discovery 1 or whatever activity it is you may be working on. Uh, you want to make sure that you exit, and exit back either all the way out of Cisco Learning Labs, or exit simply uh, back to the home screen. Uh, again, you can see here, uh, there 
definitely keeping close track down to the second of how much time uh, you're using in your learning labs setup. Okay, well, that's sort of a basic primer on how to get logged into Cisco Learning Labs, how to access your T-Shoot activities. As you can see here, these are all laid out uh, in the syllabus uh, by the either discovery title, and there's only two discovery activities. We do these in the first week, and then we move into, uh, or in the first few weeks, and then we move into the challenge activities. Again, I highly recommend that you take advantage of this software uh, over the next six months. Definitely provide you uh, with an opportunity to familiarize yourself uh, with Cisco IOS and specifically uh, with troubleshooting. And finally, again, remember you've got 3,000 minutes. You'll have your use time displayed here, total time remaining in minutes displayed there. And that is going to wrap up this video tutorial on accessing Cisco Learning Labs, how to get out of the Cisco Learning Lab activity to stop the time from running, and how to change your preferences so that if you're more uh, comfortable with the web telnet, or if that is easier for you, then you can simply change your preferences to use web telnet, or you can leave it at the default, which is going to be to use your local telnet client. All right, welcome to the start of the term. I look forward to working with everybody. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions, and have a great night.